Welcome everyone to this uh, very special occasion. Uh, my name is Helen Sullivan. I am the Dean of the College of Asia and the Pacific and I will be your uh, MC for this evening. It is my very great pleasure uh, to welcome you all uh, to this wonderful celebration of uh, staff achievement at uh, the ANU. As we begin, I would like to acknowledge and celebrate the traditional owners of the lands and airways on which we are meeting. I'm coming to you from Ngunnawal and Nambri lands, and I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present. So, as I say, this is a, a celebration of the extraordinary achievements of our colleagues throughout the year, uh, coming together of the Chancellor's Awards and the Vice-Chancellor's Awards. Uh, what could be uh, finer than this? Um, if you are fortunate enough to be at the Vice-Chancellor's residence, then I understand that there is, is food and wine. Um, if you aren't, then can I encourage you to do what I've done, which is to put on my best feather boa, which I imagine is going to annoy me intensely shortly, um, and also um, get yourself equipped with um, a glass of something special. This is uh, non-alcoholic sparkling Chardonnay, uh, which I'm drinking because I am going to be uh, hosting the events and need to stay in control. Uh, so a couple of housekeeping uh, issues before we uh, before we get into it. Um, please, uh, could you all uh, keep your microphones muted throughout the event uh, so that we don't get uh, feedback or any um, unfortunate commentary? Um, the audience, you're all welcome to use your video. We're confident that we have uh, enough bandwidth. The event is being recorded. Uh, if you don't wish to be included in the recording, please turn your video off and mute your microphone. And if you have any further concerns about us recording the event, please don't feel obliged to stay. Uh, and reminder also to be respectful. This is a celebration and it's not the right forum for other kinds of conversations. Disruptive or disrespectful audience members will be uh, ejected. And that would be a terrible shame for, for all of us when we are here to um, enjoy and celebrate some fantastic achievements. All award recipients will be contacted by the events team in the next week with details on how you collect your certificates. So look out for those emails. And if you are a recipient this evening, you'll be invited to speak. So please get prepared by unmuting your microphone and turning on your video if you wish to, once you've heard your name or, or the team's name, if you are the team lead. Um, now, uh, this is, as I say, a very special occasion and a special occasion means that we have some uh, very special presenters, uh, none more so than the Honourable Julie Bishop, who is the, the Chancellor, as you all know, of the ANU and will be presenting the, the Chancellor's Awards. Professor Brian Schmidt, our Vice-Chancellor, will be uh, presenting uh, some of the, the Vice-Chancellor's Awards. And then we also have uh, a positive uh, cornucopia of senior executive figures. Professor Marianne Diva, who's the Pro-Vice-Chancellor Education and Digital. Professor Keith Nugent, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research and Innovation. Ed O'Daly, the Director of ANU Communications and Engagement. And Dominic Haywood, the Director of Planning and Service Performance. Um, and they will all be um, uh, speaking to uh, and announcing uh, awards that are, are particular to their areas. Uh, so before we go any further, um, I'd like to invite Brian Schmidt, our Vice-Chancellor, uh, to deliver his own welcome to you. Brian, over to you. Thank you, Helen. And I too would like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands and airways we're all meeting, pay my respects to elders past and present. Now, as Helen indicated, I'm excited to be joining uh, you tonight from the Vice-Chancellor's residence. First time I've been here for a while on our beautiful campus, on the lands of the Ngunnawal Nambri people, the traditional custodians for this part of the world for more than 25 millennia. Tonight is a special occasion. In fact, it is one of my favorite events. And despite another, we'll call it challenging year, I think we could be more descriptive if we wanted to, it is important that we come together to celebrate the remarkable achievements of both our professional and our academic staff within our community. As the National University, ANU continues to be at the heart of the research and educational excellence, at one of our, and one of our core values is that we strive for excellence in everything we do. And it's not just the excellent work of our academics and our educators that make ANU so great, but also the work of our professional staff. 
Each year, I'm proud to be part of such a great community, a place where we support each other's ideas, foster innovative new approaches, and come together to solve challenges facing our nation and beyond. This year is no exception. These past two years were the toughest times the university has ever faced, but I remain optimistic about our future. Now, more than ever, it is important that we acknowledge some of those people who helped us through our most challenging times. And tonight, we will do just that. ANU is ultimately the university it is because of its people. And while tonight we will celebrate individual and team achievements, it's also important that we acknowledge all of those who supported these people along the way. I would like to acknowledge and thank the colleagues of tonight's recipients. I'd also like to thank the sponsors who took the time to nominate their colleagues. These individual accolades do not happen without the help and support of a team. And of course, there are recipients, family and friends who have had to endure a crazy last couple of years. Dedicating such a large part of yourself to your work cannot happen without the support of loved ones. I'd also like to thank our entire community. The uncertainty and hardship this year has brought, has been, I know, hard on everyone. It's been hard on everyone across the world, uh, but it is something where I can tell you, looking to the future, good times are going to return. And that's one of the reasons why I want to celebrate tonight. I admire the patience and resilience everyone has shown to get through these bad times. Your response is a testament to what makes ANU and our community so great. And I could not be more excited to see what 2022 holds for our university. As Helen indicated, we are joined tonight by our Chancellor Julie Bishop this evening from our office in Perth, and she will be presenting the 2021 Chancellor's Awards. I was, of course, hoping, and I think Julie hoping even more than I, that she would be celebrating on campus with us right now. But Julie, there's always next year and maybe even the year after that, the way things are going in Western Australia. But without further ado, I'd like to invite the Chancellor to speak and commence tonight's proceedings with the 2021 Chancellor's Award. Over to you, Julie. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. And I too acknowledge all our special guests this evening. I do wish I could be with you, Brian, at your party at the Vice Chancellor's residence, but I'm joining you from the ANU office in Perth on the traditional lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. As Brian said, although we'd hoped we'd be able to host this event in person, I am still very pleased that we're coming together for the 2021 Chancellors and Vice Chancellors Awards to recognise and celebrate the exceptional contributions made by our academic and professional staff. It's especially important for us in what has been another incredibly challenging year. While universities have the knowledge through research and teaching to make change and to think differently, universities can only be as great as their people. Without skilled, hardworking and passionate people who are committed to their work, the world would be a very different place. As Chancellor of Australia's first and only national university that sits among the world's best. I acknowledge the contributions of all members of the ANU family in areas of research and teaching and innovation and policy. Our ANU community continues to respond to not only challenges faced here at ANU, but also the unforeseen challenges our nation continues to face, particularly throughout this global pandemic. Our university has cause to celebrate the exceptional talents and high calibre of people who can be relied upon to find solutions to national, regional and global challenges. So now to the Chancellor's Awards. First, the Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Contribution to the University. Now this award recognises contributions to the economic, cultural, scientific or social development of Australia or the international community and demonstrates eminent achievement and merit of the highest degree. Our judging panel decided that there were two worthy recipients this year. So I'm pleased to announce that the first recipient of the 2021 Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Contribution to the University is Emeritus Professor Ken Baldwin. Now, Ken has been an active member of the ANU community for over 40 years through his 
awarded research career in optical and quantum physics as an academic mentor and allow me to add as an active student mountaineer. Now throughout his career, Ken has been passionate about his research and impact on the next generation of leaders. His focus and dedication and commitment to his work has been crucial in bringing initiatives into being, including the ANU Energy Change Institution and the Zero Carbon Energy for the Asia Pacific Grand Challenge. Ken's been a highly effective advocate for engagement between policymakers and STEM researchers throughout his career. And with an influential media presence through his focus on energy transition, particularly for Australia's future export industries based on renewable energy. I invite Emeritus Professor Ken Baldwin to say a few words. Thank you very much, Julian. It's a great honour to uh, receive this award. Uh, I'm reflecting this evening uh, with uh, my co-recipient, uh, who I went to school with, believe it or not, many years ago. Uh, that when I first walked through the, uh, the doors of the ANU back in 1974 as an undergraduate, that really I had no conception of where my career in physics, which I was embarking on then, might take me. And indeed, uh, you know, even more recently, uh, I do remember sitting on the bleachers with our Vice-Chancellor, Brian Schmidt, uh, watching our children at Little Athletics. And probably, you know, 15 years ago, neither of us realised that a, he would be the vice chancellor and B, that I'd be receiving uh, this award this evening. So it just goes to show uh, how things uh, develop over time. Uh, one thing I've learnt, uh, particularly uh, in recent years, is that you can continue to learn and to reinvent yourself. And the Energy Change Institute is an example of that. I've uh, developed an appreciation and a deep understanding of disciplines well beyond physics as a result of this. And indeed, I owe a lot of tonight's award to the many colleagues who I worked with in the Energy Change Institute and in physics over many years. So uh, I think it's a, a life lesson that uh, you can always learn, you can always develop, and you can always achieve well beyond those areas and those goals you had many years ago. So thank you, Julie, and uh, thank you, everybody. And indeed, I'd love to acknowledge all the people uh, who uh, helped support me in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken, and hearties congratulations. The second recipient of the 2021 Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Contribution to the University is Professor Amanda Barnard. Amanda's dedication and commitment to the university was evident when she returned from retirement in 2020, and she now serves as the Associate Dean for Rural and Indigenous Health at ANU Medical School. Amanda resumed her role as a Foundation Head of the Rural Clinical School, previously serving between 2004 and 2018. She's an inspiring leader and a positive influence on our community with her dedication to gender issues and recognition of women in medicine spanning the past 25 years. In addition to her significant work at ANU, she continues to serve on several national and regional bodies with education, rural workforce and health briefs, including the Australian Medical Council, FRAME and the Asthma Council. She's also a general practitioner in Braidwood, New South Wales. I invite Professor Amanda Barnard to say a few words. Thank you very much indeed, Julie. And uh, I'd like to echo my colleagues' words, what an honour this is. And my reflection has been just how many different ways this university encourages its, its staff, its academics, its students, its professional staff to excel across such a huge range of areas and interests. And in, in doing so, in serving the ANU's mission, both as a national university and also within our region and going out internationally. So when I think about my work and what this university has allowed me to do, it's really been focusing on the social accountability of medicine, of medical schools and of medical education. How we create skilled, educated clinicians who understand their communities, whether they're the Canberra community, whether they're rural, whether they're national communities or international ones, and serve those communities as skilled clinicians, and particularly in primary care. 
So particularly in COVID, I think we've seen how important a trusted, well-educated, critically thinking uh, primary care clinician is for many, many communities, both here and nationally. So, and again, just to, to say that this work that we do is always part of, of a team. And I would like to thank those teams who have worked with me at the ANU Medical School and the Rural Clinical School here to help us produce clinicians who are now medical leaders in their fields. And on a personal note, in this 75th anniversary of the ANU, this means something to me personally, and that three generations of my family now have been studying in some form or on the academic staff here at this institution. So it means something very, very important to me uh, to be this recipient of this award. So I'd like to thank my sponsor and the team, and thank you, Julie, and, and your selection panel for this enormous honour. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda, and congratulations on your award. And thank you for your acknowledgement of the other members of the team around you. Now, the Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Service to the Campus Community. This recognises voluntary and sustained contributions which enhance the general welfare and life of the campus and benefit the institution as a whole. And I'm delighted to announce that the 2021 Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Service to the Campus Community, the recipient is the COVID Response Office. In other words, Professor Tracy Smart and Ms. Patricia Tay. Now the hard work and diligence displayed by the COVID Response Office throughout the pandemic has been crucial in supporting ANU operations and service continuity. The team have built connections with other federal, state and territory governments, synthesized global and local research and trends to develop regular communications, COVID guidelines, and the campus alert level system. Tracy and Pat's willingness to adapt and change in uncertain times to support the needs of governments and health authorities and students and staff and the wider community is absolutely inspirational. I also recognize the numerous other staff who helped and supported the COVID response office with their specialty knowledge and advice and with their contributions the COVID Response Office was able to be creative, agile, and positively benefit more members of the community. And these examples of teamwork are what make our university a great place to study and work and live. So I'll invite Tracy and Pat to say a few words. I'm not sure if Tracy's available, but I can see Pat certainly at the Vice Chancellor's party. So over to you, Patricia. Thanks, Chancellor. And it's really been a rewarding couple of years for Tracy and I just uh, for us to see how the university community has come together during these difficult times and uncertain times to and the success of the COVID response of the university is really a testament to the entire university community to have behaved in a COVID safe way. So I want to say it really wouldn't have been possible without everyone. But in particular, we really also want to thank Ian Anderson, Paul Dalding and Russell Gruen and Anastasia Manny West for this nomination. We're very honoured as well as the VC and you, Chancellor, for your unending support throughout this time. To all the teams that have uh, worked with us and supported us, Susan Hellyer, the Jameses, Brandon Jeffress, uh, Nikki Middleton and their teams who have stood up to every challenge with great spirit and teamwork. Marianne Diva, Dom Haywood and your team, your ready support throughout the lockdown was really invaluable. And of course, Will, Medi and Liv, you guys are truly an ace team. And just personally, I also want to thank Dom and Russell again, who are seemingly infinitely wise and I'm very grateful for your mentorship and guidance. And of course, Tracy Smart, who has been an inspirational leader and an awesome boss and the best partner in this roller coaster of a ride. <laughs> I think Tracy has some words to say as well. I do, thanks, Pat. Um, obviously, I couldn't join Pat tonight um, at the Vice Chancellor's residence because I'm in home quarantine. Um, as Pat said, uh, I've been so busy being a role model and being COVID safe that I evidently wasn't chickenpox safe. So I've been diagnosed with a childhood illness that I already had in my childhood. So it's a, even though my odds of COVID were probably greater, that's what I've got. But I'd like to add to the thank yous and obviously echo the thank yous. I'd particularly like to thank my two dads, as I call them, Ian Anderson and Russ Gruen, 
who uh, set me on this journey and have really been so supportive through all of this. Uh, also, Imtiaz Bayat, I'd like to give a nod to him. He was there when I stood up, uh, when we stood up the, Crow, the COVID response office last year. Um, and he really taught me the ropes working in this strange new environment that is a new a university. And then, of course, I'd like to thank Pat. Pat stepped in after Imtiaz left at very short notice right in the middle of our ultimately unsuccessful attempts to bring international students back. Um, and really it was a trial by fire, but she's, uh, she stuck around and she developed from my right hand person to a true partner in crime. And I want to um, obviously acknowledge uh, her efforts, particularly um, during the lockdown, her compassion and care to our customers, the whole university were exceptional. And finally, I just want to um, thank everybody at the uni from the Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor on down. Um, many, many people who transition from the ADF find it very difficult. And a lot of that, I think, is because of a loss of sense of purpose and a disconnection from their tribe. Um, and, and I think what this role has given me is that sense of purpose, and that's to keep the university safe. And it's also given me a new tribe. And um, because of that, I've been able to, to uh, seamlessly transition from my institutionalisation of 35 years into my post-service career. And I look forward to developing that post-service career with the university in the years to come. Thank you again, everybody. Well, thank you, Tracy. And we're delighted that you're part of our tribe, but we would like you to get better and all the very best for recovering from chickenpox. That's a novelty in these COVID times. But to both you and Pat, thank you for your valuable contribution to the health and safety of our community in these uh, COVID challenging times. I now present the 2021 Peter Bohm Award, named in honour of former ANU Chancellor, Professor the Honourable Peter Bohm AC. This award represents our top accolade for an ANU academic and acknowledges exceptional contribution to the Australian National University. This award is the university's most prestigious award and it recognises outstanding achievement and merit of the absolute highest order. Tonight, I am pleased to announce that the recipient of the 2021 Peter Bohm Award is Distinguished Professor Emeritus, John Braithwaite. Throughout his career, John has achieved eminence within the social sciences as in being influential in advancing knowledge across a range of issues, including global business governance, peace building, Republican social theory, responsive regulation, restorative justice, delinquency, and white collar crime. For the last 50 years, John has been active in the peace movement, the politics of development, the social movement for restorative justice, the labor movement, and the consumer movement in Australia and internationally. John has successfully supervised over 80 PhD scholars, mentored numerous early career scholars and produced many hundreds of scholarly outputs. He also founded the Regulatory Institutions Network known as Regnet and now the ANU School of Regulation and Global Governance, an interdisciplinary hub that continues to nurture transformative social science. Professor John Braithwaite, I invite you to say a few words. Well, thank you for those kind words, uh, uh, Chancellor. I've been very fortunate with the uh, colleagues that have surrounded me throughout my very long time at, uh, uh, at, at ANU. The, uh, uh, you know, one gets an award like this and, and you know, you mentioned the, the, the quantity of articles, which is uh, not a measure of quality, there are some good bits there, but some not so good bits as well. I have also have 100 co-authors, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to think of any of the good bits that weren't a responsibility of the co-authors, actually, but I'm, I'm pleased to take the award. Uh, anyhow, it is uh, a, a great honour, and I'm very thankful to you and your committee for it, and for my colleagues who are kind enough to, uh, to nominate me uh, for it. Um, I am very proud of my uh, colleagues in the Regulatory Institutions Network, uh, Regnet, School of Regulation and Global Governance, it's various, it's various names. Uh, the, uh, these new interdisciplinary groups have the advantage of 
making it possible for the university to break out of old patterns, not only in terms of crossing disciplinary divides, but also crossing out of patterns of male domination. So uh, like, uh, like the space science area, for example, where it's been possible to build a majority female group, our group from the very beginning has been a majority female group. And the founding uh, generation of, of whom the most important influence on me, I can't mention them all, was uh, Valerie Braithwaite. She got a job at, uh, at ANU in 1978. I, I couldn't get a job initially at ANU when we came down from Queensland, but had an interesting period of my life working for NGOs and for, for government during those, uh, uh, during those, those, those early years. So we, we became an ANU family as well. Uh, once I moved to ANU, we had two children who graduated from ANU. We went on study leave in 1988 and we had an ANU colleague who minded the house uh, for us, Brian Harold, while we were away. And when we returned from Chicago, he never left uh, and he's still there. So, so we have a very unusual kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, ANU family living, uh, living uh, in our house and we've very much lived and breathed the, uh, the, uh, the institution. Um, but it's been my students who have been so important in, with, with all of us, I think, in interdisciplinary groups, the students bottom up uh, give you uh, the energy uh, and the, the energy has assisted. That's just one of the ways with the gender transformation, but I'm grateful to have Kate Henner, our current director here, and she's uh, the fifth in a line of uh, five uh, female Regnet directors that we've had in, uh, in succession, and we're very proud of that too. So thank you. Thank you, John, and congratulations. And again, delightful your humility in acknowledging uh, your colleagues who are also committed to excellence, as you most certainly are. Now, if we were all together in person, I would be presenting each of our Chancellor Award recipients with a gift, a beautiful glass bowl handmade by local artists from the renowned Jam Factory in South Australia to honour the contribution of each of our recipients to the university. And in addition, if I were there with Professor Braithwaite, our Peter Bohm Award winner, I would also present him with a Macquarie Atlas of Indigenous Australia. So it's all in the mail. But congratulations again to the recipients. You certainly do our university proud. There was a significant number of nominations this year, and I want to thank the nominators for their support of the awards and also the members of our judging panel who carried out what was a rather lengthy task, the selection process, with great integrity and confidence. So now, with congratulations to all the winners, I'll hand back to Helen. Chancellor, thank you for that uh, 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 very um, uh, professional um, uh, allocation of awards to, to people. And um, uh, it was just terrific to hear, um, as you say, so many generous speeches, so much, so much humility on display. It's one of the things I think that um, it's not usually associated with universities, but um, we certainly seem to have it here at the ANU in, uh, in quite sufficient uh, quantities. So. Um, I'd just like to add my congratulations to um, to all of the winners, um, and uh, maybe just to to emphasise to um, uh, future nominees: um, don't think that you need to get chickenpox or some other kind of uh, nasty disease in order to be considered uh, eligible for this award. Um, it's uh, it, I think that is is just Tracy doing what she's always doing, which is going the extra mile. Um, but uh, yes, Tracy, we we really hope that you uh, you get well soon. Um, so now uh, we move on to the Vice Chancellor's Awards and uh, here as I indicated earlier we have uh, um, a, a cacophony, it's probably the wrong word, but it's the one that comes to mind of uh, senior executive folk who are going to be uh, presenting uh, these awards and um, uh, 
we will start uh, with uh, Marianne Deva, Professor and Pro Vice Chancellor of Education and Digital, who will be presenting the Vice Chancellor's Award for Early Career Academics and the Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence. So, Marianne, over to you. Thank you, Helen, and it's a great pleasure to be here this evening. Now, I think we all know that ANU is home to some of the most outstanding early career academics who are conducting high impact research in their respective fields of study. And it's really exciting to be able to recognise high achievement at this particular career stage. I'm very pleased this evening to announce that the Vice Chancellor's Award for Early Career Academics, in fact, has two recipients. First up, we have Dr. Shaolin Wan. Shaolin is a pioneering researcher in carbon capture and energy saving in Australia. And just listen to this. She's published around 59 high impact research outputs, including two book chapters and 32 referee journal articles, and has 15 patents with three of them commercialized. The scientific merit, novelty and impact of her contributions are evidenced by the award of the DECRA only two years after completion of her PhD and her success in the ANU Global Research Partnership Scheme. I'm going to ask Shalin to say just a few words now. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thank you, everyone. It's a big honor and a big surprise to me. And I'm so glad this is a, you know, an online event so everyone can see my body shaking. I'm so excited. <laughs> But you can still hear my voice shaking indeed. And a, a little bit journey about myself, I had my PhD here. So I think um, I'm the baby of the ANU in terms of my academic life. Um, so after I finished my PhD in 2017, I turned a, a teaching intensive lecturer at ANU. And uh, being a um, early career academic here is so happy that everyone taking care of you and um, like tolerant to your mistakes and things like that. So I want really want to help other early career academics. So I became a um, early career academic representative of our college. Then people are nice to me and um, they help me with everything, take care of my mistakes. So I'm so grateful that you provide me with such a supportive environment to grow from a baby to a maybe be a growing um, grown um, adult in my in my career. I'm so happy everyone. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Shalin. Our second winner this evening, Dr. Kinley Wang Di, is a spatial epidemiologist leading a team on the spatial epidemiology of infectious diseases within the Department of Global Health Research School of Population Health. Kinley is a highly productive and experienced researcher on a significant upward research trajectory, demonstrated by significant research outputs and impact with translation to policy. He has published 70 research papers in high impact journals, notably Lancet Global Health and Lancet Infectious Disease. I'm going to ask Kinley to say just a few words now. Thank you. Uh, good evening to all of you. So it's a uh, a big honor for me to receive this uh, award. And uh, I'm also, I also just completed my PhD from ANU and I'm also similar to the earlier discipline. I'm also a child of uh, ANU and uh, I'd like to first thank ANU for giving me this uh, platform, this opportunity to really uh, do a, a, or to say the research that I'm very passionate about. So, uh, I would also like to just extend a few uh, words of thanks to my supervisor, Professor Darren Gray, who, was, uh, who has really supported uh, me during these uh, uh, times. And I would like to thank my colleague, uh, Hari Bondu Sharma, who nominated for this uh, award, and all uh, my colleagues at the RSPH, uh, the Science School of Population Health. And I also like to extend uh, my uh, thanks to my national and international collaborators through which uh, I have lot of, uh, done a lot of uh, work. Last but not least, my family who has been supporting uh, during these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, Shalin and Kinley. Ooh. Sorry, thank you and congratulations, Shalin and Kinley. And there's no doubt there's so much more to come from both of you. And we really look forward to watching you continue on to great success in your careers. 
Next up, we have the Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence. Now, after several years of what I think we all recognise has been extreme disruption to learning and teaching, it's great to see how some of our educators have met the challenge of new times and offer outstanding models for their peers. The award this evening is granted to an individual who's been recognised for their skill in sharing and developing knowledge with their students. Our next winner sees himself as the ringmaster at the flea circus in his lectures and has quite the alter ego to go with it. His act is often described by his students as awe-inspiring and enlightening. Please join me in congratulating Professor Alexander Mayer, a parasitologist from the Research School of Biology, ANU College of Science. Alex's creative and dynamic approach to teaching places student perspectives, humility and respect at its centre. His understanding of student learning is grounded in sound pedagogy and his teaching promotes paradigm shifts that prompt students to question their assumptions and adopt new frames of thought. I'm now going to ask Alex to say just a few words. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm, I'm just speechless and, and very pleased to be here and of course honored and humbled by, by this award. I think universities are often torn between the different domains of teaching and research, and we all have the personal and daily experiences where teaching and research collide. However, I think also that it's the synergy between both that make universities special and valuable. What could be better than being taught by a practitioner that actually have also been the same person who have contributed to the generation of the knowledge that is taught. And at the same time, being challenged all the time by the perspective and, and observations of the students by their curiosity, I think makes a much more meaningful research endeavor. I would like also to acknowledge all the lecturers and co-lecturers and, and colleagues uh, across biology, across the ANU and across uh, the country. Uh, I would like to thank them for sharing their creativity, their inspiration and being great colleagues. I would like to single out Denise Higgins and Susan Howard, who actually have opened up my, eye, my eyes for the scholarship of teaching and Kevin Saliba and Melanie Roop for their constant support and being able to bounce off ideas with them. But I especially would like to acknowledge the people behind the scenes, the people in the uh, science teaching team, the support team at the biology teaching and learning center, the people in RSB IT, and of course, at the college level. They make the things so much easier, all the, all the uh, cumbersome things that, that come with teaching. But most importantly, I would like to acknowledge the extraordinary enthusiasm and dedication of our students. Innovative teaching means taking risks. And that also means doing experiments and conducting experiments. And of course, it wouldn't be an experiment if they would all go according to plan. <laughs> and therefore, something, some, sometimes things go astray and are not according to plan. And so I would like to thank them for their sportsmanship and for their patience. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations, Alex. And I think it's really significant that um, each of our award recipients this evening has really highlighted the network of support, the people around them who have supported them and lifted them up to these levels of achievement. So a big round of applause for all of our winners and indeed to all of our colleagues for their incredible commitment across the university to all of their fields of study. And I'll pass back to you, Hal Helen. Thanks so much, Marianne. And um, uh, congratulations to Shaolin, King Lee, and to Alex. And uh, um, Alex, I'm sure that, uh, that Marianne uh, will be uh, hot on your trail of uh, um, people in IT who do wonderful things. Um, I think that that's something that we're, uh, uh, we're all searching for. Um, and so uh, if, if, if you have some over there in the Research School of Biology, um, then, uh, then I, th I think we'll, uh, we'll all be in demand for them. Um, so the, uh, we move next to uh, the 
uh, awards for excellence in research and uh, it's my task now to invite Professor Keith Nugent, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research and Innovation, to present the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Research. Keith. Uh, thank you, uh, Helen. Um, <clears throat> I think as we all know, ANU is a university that prides itself on the quality and the impact of the research that it does and it's really proud of the impact um, that the research has in the world around us. But it's also very proud of the fact that, of the way that our research informs our teaching. And so since we are very, very good at research, we are very, very good at doing that research informed uh, teaching work. And so it's a, a hold that makes ANU a really special place. But given that true excellence in uh, research, to be awarded the ANU uh, Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Research is a very, very special honour. It's a very tough competition to win it really needs you to be among the best of the best. Uh, and so it's really my pleasure today to announce, in fact, we're going to have three winners uh, for this award this year, all are very different and all are truly, truly excellent. So the first winner we have um, is Associate Professor Tegan Cruis. Uh, uh, Tegan is a social and clinical psychologist who is making waves around Australia and the world for her research integrating the science of social relationships with health policy and practice. Uh, with over 100 academic papers and grants from both NHMRC and the ARC, Tegan is committed to advancing theoretical understanding of the social determinants of health and well-being. So with that introduction, I'd like now, I would now like to call upon Tegan to say a few words. Thank you, Keith. I'm, I'm shocked and so surprised and pleased. Thank you so much. Um, my research is all about how important community is for our health and the ANU community has been really powerful for me and my career and, and my health and well-being as well. Um, it's a really supportive environment um, and not just, I don't just mean in terms of the soft stuff, I also mean in terms of me being able to do the research I do is a big part of that has been the support that ANU has given me um, over the last few years. Um, my research is all about health equity, social justice, and about how we can use rigorous science to achieve those things. Um, so I'm, I'm excited because that is so, such important work and I'm really passionate about it. And it's great to hear that other people are as well and that we're getting a kind of impact that I think this research really deserves. Um, so thanks ANU. And I think the next thing for me is really making sure that the fantastic opportunities for mentorship and support that I've received are what we now go on to give the next generation of scientists coming up at ANU. So thanks so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Tegan. You can, I can hear the passion for your work coming through and the way you talk about it. Uh, the second award um, goes to the Advanced Instrumentation and Technology Centre, AITC team. The AITC is leading Australia's participation in the world's largest optical observatories of both today and tomorrow. The team's remarkable achievements include adaptive optics, laser communications, earth observation, space testing, and this is about, about which I personally know a little bit, and I've been myself personally really, really gobsmacked by the quality of the work that's been done by this team. So to accept the award, can I please call upon the team lead, Professor uh, Celine D'Orgeville. Celine. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, this is a, a great honor and a great pleasure to be uh, receiving this award on behalf of the entire Advanced Instrumentation and Technology Center team at the Research School of Astronomy and Astrophysics. Our team is uh, pretty exceptional and quite unique in the ANU environment. Uh, it, it's a group of about 40 researchers and engineers uh, who are co-leading the ITC research programs uh, in astronomy and uh, space instrumentation and uh, also technology development in these areas. Uh, our team also includes uh, many students, both undergraduate and postgraduate students who are uh, members of the team really and participate in all our projects and uh, help us uh, deliver on our uh, commercial contracts as well. Uh, and we also have a, a broad uh, administrative support team, which is not officially part of the ITC because it's not on our payroll, but it's definitely part of the team because they provide the support we need to keep going both at the school and at the college level. Um, the ATC has evolved from uh, at the technical department of the Research School of Astronomy and Astrophysics to a self-standing uh, research center in uh, astronomy and space research. And um, uh, it's part of uh, 
the Australia landscape. Uh, it's um, a member of Astralis, which is a national consortium uh, of astronomical instrumentation. It's also offering services to the Australian space industry with the National Space Test Facility. And uh, it continues to grow uh, in collaboration, in close collaboration with the AMU uh, uh, in space, the Innovation Institute for Space. So um, I would like to thank uh, a lot of people. Thank you, uh, Keith, for giving us this award. Thank you, uh, Matthew Paulus, the director of the Research School of Astronomy and Astrophysics, uh, who's been supporting our technical department over the years. Thank you, Anna Mu, our previous ITC director, who set us on our current successful trajectory. Um, thank you, Roger Haynes, the technical director at the ITC, Francois Rigaud, the Astralis ITC director. Thank you to uh, the entire EITC executive team, all our staff and students. And uh, thank you all for this award. And my cat is happy as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to have a little bit of touch of Zoom going on there with the, 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 pet, the pet coming in. Thank you, Celine. That's great to hear about that, about the work that you do. Um, our third and final winner of, the, of this award is a world leading researcher working at the intersection of rational choice theory and environmental philosophy. Associate Professor Katie Steele's research is unique in the extent to which she brings theoretical considerations in philosophy to bear on urgent real world problems, especially concerning climate science and policy. So Katie, please say a few words. Thanks very much, Keith. Um, yeah, it's a great honour and I'm, I'm embarrassed to be in such fine company uh, this evening. It's really been very inspiring hearing about everybody's projects. Um, these last years at ANU you've been uh, particularly fruitful for me in my research. I feel like I've sort of uh, come into a new uh, realm um, thanks to the great environment at ANU. Um, I feel a little uh, embarrassed and privileged that I've prospered so well even during the global pandemic when um, others have not been so fortunate. Um, but uh, I've been able to keep on with my research and, and to have such a rich and rewarding uh, position at the ANU. Um, so yes, so thank you to all my colleagues. Um, I'm very humbled to, to receive this. Uh, thanks also to my colleagues who nominated me for this award. Uh, going forward, I just hope that I can use uh, my rational choice superpowers uh, to uh, really uh, make a, even more of a contribution uh, to the many problems that we face going forward, um, not least, you know, the, the serious social challenges associated with climate change. Um, this will be motivation. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you, Katie. Uh, the world could do with a lot more rational choice, that is for sure. So thank you for that. Um, okay, uh, that's our awards for uh, this uh, this section. So back to you, Helen. Thank you so much, Keith, and uh, congratulations, uh, Tegan, Katie, Celine, and indeed uh, Celine's cat. So uh, Celine has now set the bar for um, uh, how you need to uh, receive these awards. So. Um, uh, any future um, acceptance speeches accompanied by turtles, seals, wild birds, whatever you like. Um, just, just find something and bring it along. Um, before we move on, I should just say, before I bring the opprobrium of uh, all of my IT colleagues, as well as the rest of uh, the IT function in the university down on my head, of course, the problem in the, U, in the University of ANU is, is not the people, absolutely not. It is the fact that we, uh, our people need to wrangle with somewhat, shall we say, um, uh, less than optimal systems. So um, with that, um, I'll try and dig myself out of the hole by um, inviting um, Ed O'Daly, who's the director of our communications and engagement function, to, to speak and to present the Vice Chancellor's Award for Impact and Engagement. Thanks very much, Helen. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here and presenting this award tonight, um, in particular because, as some of you may know, or even for the, some of the long-term service award recipients remember, this isn't my first time at ANU. I moved to Canberra 18 years ago to work here. It was a good, it was a good decision, and I'm really grateful to ANU for that. And that's why I was able to be lured back a couple of years ago, because ANU has so many people who aren't just doing great work. They're passionate about sharing it with the wider public. 
And that's our obligation as a national university to do. And it's a privilege as a professional to be part of it. So I'm really delighted to be here to celebrate ANU engagement, just as I was delighted to see such a broad and competitive field in this category. So I'm pleased to announce that we have two recipients of the award and three finalists. The first recipient of the award is the COVID-19 Impact Monitoring Program led by Professor Matthew Gray and Professor Nicholas Biddle from the Center for Social Research and Methods in the ANU College of Arts and Social Sciences. The study they've been undertaking is the largest longitudinal study of its kind in Australia. It has been tracking the pandemic since COVID arrived in Australia up until today. And I'm pleased to say it's been keeping my colleague James Gigaher behind me very busy with engaging with the media throughout the last couple of years. So I'd really like to call on Professors Gray and Biddle to say a few words. Uh, thanks, Ed, uh, and uh, thanks everyone for those very kind words. Uh, so I'll just say something really briefly and then Matt can add uh, as well. So I wanted to uh, acknowledge the rest of the team, uh, Associate Professor Ben Edwards uh, and Kate Solis from the ANU Centre for Social Research and Methods, who've uh, contributed substantially to the work we've been doing uh, on uh, both the data collection, data analysis and reporting. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Social Research Centre uh, and ANU and company who uh, do the data collection for the impact monitoring um, survey and have done an outstanding job in uh, collecting data uh, and working with us on the methods for the survey. Uh, and finally, uh, to James, James Gigachev who, in the media office, uh, who've uh, texted me uh, more times than I can uh, I care to admit, uh, asking us to uh, please answer that uh, journalist uh, number. Um, uh, please uh, um, uh, pick up the phone uh, and, and to, to wrangle uh, us and the journalists in, in, in terms of uh, kind of getting our message out there. Um, so uh, thanks everyone uh, for, for the award and I hand over to Matt to, to say uh, anything else you'd like to add. Thank you, Nick, and I don't want to say very much other than to say uh, Nick provided the leadership for the team, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, and it's a good example of preparation meets opportunity. Um, we've been running these surveys um, for a number of years, um, and uh, uh, other people have been involved, and um, we were able to turn uh, very quickly to focus on COVID, and it's a good example, I think, of how long-term investments in this kind of research infrastructure and capability can become very timely. So thank you very much, everyone. Many thanks, Matt and Nick, for that. Um, our second recipient of the Impact and Engagement Award has significantly advanced the national discussion of the sexism experienced by women in politics, a discussion that we all know came to a head in 2021. Dr. Blair Williams' analysis of the gendered nature of the media coverage of women in politics has had a significant impact both within and beyond the academy. I'd like to invite Professor Williams, Dr. Williams to say a few words. I didn't prepare any words, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, this is fantastic news. I'm shocked and overwhelmed. Uh, I want to thank um, ANU for being, you know, the fantastic university that it is and so close to Parliament House, which makes it useful for me to study uh, the sexism um, in there, which I've been doing since I started my PhD here in 2015 and just finished last year. So, yeah, my heart's beating quite fast. Um, but, I mean, I guess it feels kind of bad at the same time to be, uh, you know, winning an award based on things that are so horrific that we've seen this year come out of Parliament House. Um, and that has been obviously in the culture, you know, in those, in those walls for, for quite some time, if not built on, on, on that as a foundation. Um, but, you know, I think it's really important to, to kind of get this uh, research out there to keep this topic in the media, particularly, uh, to keep it at the top of the agenda, um, particularly when we go into an election year next year. So thanks also for the media team and James uh, G as well for, for those text messages and emails. Very brilliant help um, and fantastic uh, to everyone at the media team. So thank you again. Thanks, thanks Blair, for those um, timely and well-chosen words. Um, the selection committee had received some incredibly strong nominations in this field. And so we've also awarded three finalists for the Vice Chancellor Award for Impact and Engagement. Our first finalist is Dr. Maria Maley from the School of Politics and International Relations. She's one of the few researchers who focuses on gender in political staffing. Maria has been the go-to expert for regulators to solve the issues surrounding parliamentary workplace conduct. Our second finalist is Professor David Sharkey, who has almost single-handedly raised awareness surrounding multiple sclerosis through his research and through his personal story. 
His webinars and work with national and international organisations have helped thousands of Australians. And last, but certainly not least, going where no one has gone before, the ANU Institute for Space Team, led by Professor Anna Moore. They are positioning Australia to be a leader in space technology through their expertise in areas including positioning, navigation and timing, earth observation, communication technologies and services. Congratulations to all of these winners. Over to you, Helen. Thank you, Ed. Um, what a fine collection of, uh, of winners uh, we have there. And um, it's really terrific to see uh, the range of, of ways in which uh, colleagues at the ANU are now getting engaged, making an impact um, right across the board. So congratulations to, to all of them. Um, and thank you too, Ed, uh, for uh, um, announcing those awards. Now, I'd now like to invite Dominique Haywood, the Director of Planning and Service Performance, to present the Vice Chancellor's Award for Innovation and Excellence in Service and the Andrew Hopkins Award for Excellence in Health and Safety. Dominique. Hey, Helen. Um, the disruption over the past two years has forced us to rethink what is normal. But the dedication of people here at the ANU is both normal and extraordinary. Over my three years here, I've been lucky to work with people who are absolutely committed to providing the best possible service. And I appreciate the opportunity to present this award, which recognises the hard work and ingenuity of our staff, which they have put into it, ensure that the university meets its strategic goals. I'm delighted to announce that we have two recipients of the award for excellence and innovation in service. Our first recipient is Belinda Farrelly, Associate Director, Organisational Change. Belinda has been at the forefront of the university's recovery process. She carried out the mammoth task of building a pathway to a financially sustainable position while ensuring affected staff were treated with dignity and respect. Her professionalism and diligence have been recognised by several of her colleagues. And I'd now like to invite Belinda to say a few words. Um, thanks, Don. Um, for once, I'm a little bit speechless, which for those that are in the room that know me will be will find that quite amusing. Um, I'm very humbled to have been nominated for this award and to have received it. Um, and I wish to thank firstly um, Nadine White, who is our Director of um, our Chief People and Culture Officer, um, who has provided awesome leadership to me and, and to many during this really challenging time. Um, I certainly didn't do this alone. Um, there was a bunch of, um, a, a massive team of people that I worked alongside um, to deliver this, both um, through the recovery plan phase. There was a massive team of us that had um, many hours of Teams chats and, and exchanges to get things um, through. And, and I thank my colleagues, um, all the general managers, all the service division directors, um, the executive across the portfolio who took my calls and, um, wrangled with me and, and worked with me uh, to, to help us uh, get to where we needed to be. Um, and um, to my colleagues in the comms team, the ACE team, um, you were awesome and you always helped me out. And to my colleagues in FMBS, I couldn't have done it uh, without you. Um, so there are many to thank and um, I just certainly am very honoured and appreciate this award. Thank you, Belinda. Um, our second recipient is a team who are at the forefront in ensuring that both staff and students were supported in the height of the second wave of the pandemic. The FNS COVID operations team, composed of volunteer staff from across colleges and divisions across the whole of the ANU, completed a range of challenging tasks, with one of their most notable tasks being that they provided residential students with essential food and water supplies. The volunteers were involved in sourcing, storage, meal preparation, packaging and delivery. Their commitment ensured that nearly 2,000 residential students were provided with fresh fruit and vegetables daily during the sudden lockdown. It is my utmost pleasure to welcome the team lead, Nikki Middleton, to accept the award on behalf of the entire team. Nikki, can I ask you to say a few words? Uh, <laughs> I'm lost for words at all. Uh, thank you, uh, Tom, I wasn't expecting this. Um, look, I'll, I'll just say um, I have a really awesome facilities and services division, but um, this piece of work that we did couldn't have been done without the whole of the university. Um, every single division and college stepped up. <clears throat> um, nearly every service division and college general manager um, answered my phone calls, whether they're at six o'clock in the morning or at midnight. And it was an awesome team effort and we really couldn't have done it without everyone. Um, 
look, it really just goes to show what a wonderful community we have. Um, everyone pulls together um, in a time of need and we really did the very best we could for the students right at the peak of, of a really exhausting period for everyone, you know, right across Canberra. So um, really, thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone on this call and across the university, very big thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I think it's fair to say that these times have brought out the best in our community. And I would like to therefore recognise another two finalists in this category. Our first finalist deployed a new strategy that involved expanding research business development across the ANU to meet funding and industry engagement targets. Karen Jackson showed exemplary stakeholder consultations across the research portfolio and all of the seven colleges. Thank you, Karen. Our second finalist for the Vice Chancellor's Award is Sarah Walker. Sarah has been instrumental in transforming the first year student experience at ANU. She has been involved in launching the ANU Plus volunteering program, the Set for ANU initiative, and Griffin Hall, the campus hall for non-residential students. Her dedication to supporting students from various backgrounds and at different stages of their university journey has played a significant role in retaining first year students. Please join me now in congratulating our two winners and our two finalists. You epitomise what our community stands for. I'd like now to move to presenting the Andrew Hopkins Award for Excellence in Health and Safety. As I'm Chair of the Portfolio WHS Committee, you may have heard me talking about how safety is everybody's job. We all have an obligation to make each other safe in the workplace. This is why safety matters and why we recognise those who have worked hard to make their colleagues and our students safe during their time at ANU. This year's recipient of the 2021 Andrew Hopkins Award for Excellence in Health and Safety goes to a team that has ensured the disruption caused by the lockdowns did not impact the quality of teaching as they manage and oversee health and safety across a dynamic and complex school. The School of Art and Design technical team have been able to ensure that traditional pedagogical pedagogical practices have been moved online while providing exceptional technical support to students studying remotely and overseas. The willingness of the team to contribute to course adaptations and innovations, as well as their contributions to the return to campus planning processes and the coordinated manner in which tasks were split and responsibilities were shared is exemplary. I would now like to call on the team lead, Jeremy Lepisto, to accept the award on behalf of the entire team and say a few words. Oh, wow. Uh, th thank you so much. Um, this is a wonderful surprise, uh, especially for a team that's worked so hard over such an avalanche of adventures uh, over the past few years. Um, thank you, ANU. Thank you, CAS, RSHA. Um, thank you to our head of school, uh, Beck Davis, who gave us a nomination and the leadership, especially with our return to campus intensive work. Uh, Suzanne Knight, our school manager, and Amy Kermens for their leadership through COVID and return to campus, and especially the team. It's, a, it's been amazing. It's a small team. We're centralizing all of our efforts to do what we can to open the school back up, uh, deal with the 1938 building, and uh, yeah, just make things happen. So thank you so much. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, thank you for, the, for you and the team and your leadership in these uh, COVID affected times. Back to you, Helen. Thanks so much, Dominique. And um, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's really uh, heartening that uh, the, the chat has, has gone completely crazy over the, the, the awards that, that you were um, announcing, which I think says something for just how highly regarded um, um, all of the colleagues are for the incredibly difficult uh, and challenging work that they've been doing um, and doing so well. So congratulations to, to all of you. Um, I'd now like to invite the Vice Chancellor, Brian Schmidt, to present the Claire Burton Award for Excellence in Equity and Diversity and the 25 and 40 Year Service Awards. Brian. Thank you and good to be back to you uh, from the Vice Chancellor's residence. Our next award was named in memory and celebration of Dr. Claire Burton, the Claire Burton Award for Excellence in Equity and Diversity. Dr. Burton made a broad ranging and unique contribution to the advancement of women in Australia, including those in the tertiary sector. 
This year's recipient led an initiative that intended to redefine her school's culture and one that was based on the premise of inclusion and respect. Associate Professor Amy King established and chaired Coral Bell School Gender Equity Working Group that used open discussion and data to reduce, reduce barriers for women and to promote equal opportunity across the school. Her work has enabled the school to develop principles and best practices within recruitment, research, publishing, teaching, and learning. This achievement has led several schools across campus to follow suit and consult with her on matters of gender equity. So congratulations, Amy. I'd like now to invite you to say a few words. Um, well, thank, thanks so much, Brian. Um, I'm, I'm really flattered and, and um, surprised to have been nominated by my colleagues for this award and very grateful for it, so thank you. Um, a huge thanks, uh, first and foremost, to, to my colleagues within the Bell School who um, joined me as part of the Gender Equity Working Group to, to spearhead this work. Um, I think collectively we turned what was frankly, you know, feelings of frustration and, and often anger and despair into something really positive. Um, and it's been wonderful to work with so many colleagues across the Bell School um, in, in hopefully developing this cultural change over the last few years. Um, but equally importantly, I, I very much want to thank um, women within my own school who have pioneered work in this area before me, um, who inspired me. Um, and those across the university um, in the ANU Gender Institute, but in all of the colleges, women and men, um, who've led gender equity initiatives of their own um, and who gave me so much advice on things that, that we could do in the Bell School. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, you know, passing on any, uh, any thoughts that we have um, uh, uh, developed out of our process um, to, to others in the university. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amy. And, and this really is a splendid example of how our community continues to learn and evolve. When I started as vice chancellor uh, just about six years ago, uh, Coral Bell had a real challenging reputation. And while it's not perfect yet, it's come a long ways. And Amy, thank you for helping Coral Bell in that journey. Thank you. We have two finalists for the Claire Burton Award. Our first finalist is a team that developed a new program from recruitment to curriculum development by incorporating principles of diversity and inclusion at its very core. The team developed the Master of Applied Cybernetics program by bringing together students and staff from various backgrounds, disciplines, and life experiences. They used different languages in their recruitment and support functions while their cohort and staff included individuals from theater to engineering. Please join me in congratulating the Student Recruitment Experience and Curriculum Development Team of the School of Cybernetics, led by Professor Catherine Daniel. Our second finalist is the COVID-19 ICU triage team, which is led by Dr. Brett Schultz and Dr. Imogen Mitchell. This team developed a strategy by working together with patients and community members, the ACT health programs, to ensure equal opportunities were given to patients who needed to be admitted to the ICU with COVID-19, irrespective of their background. With such an initiative and research strategy, the team played a crucial role in the nation's pandemic response whilst prioritizing patients' human rights. Again, please join me in congratulating the COVID ICU triage team on being named a finalist for 2021. Back to you, Helen. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I think I need to bring you back, Brian, because you're presenting the 25 and 40 year service awards. This year, we have a large number of staff members who have delivered 25 years of service to the university. Uh, I, was, I had my 25th award last year, but we also have two staff members who have delivered 40 years of service to the university. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Barlow from the Infrastructure Services and Professor Teddy Mattis from the College of Health and Medicine. This is a significant milestone and one that you should both be incredibly proud of. Your loyalty, your dedication to ANU is admirable and has in no small way contributed to what has been achieved over these four decades. The complete list has been posted in the chat and I do encourage you to congratulate your colleagues on this milestone, either tonight or in the weeks ahead. As this evening comes to a close, I would like to invite you all in joining me in celebrating the 2021 recipients. 
if you have a drink in hand and I am getting one that is going to uh, magically appear out of shot, I will give you a second to charge your glasses. We're drinking a local Canberra bubble here, by the way, uh, made by one of my colleagues. Can I ask you to raise your glass as we toast our 2021 recipients? Congratulations again to everyone on your fantastic achievements. And Helen, I'm going to hand back to you to wrap things up. Cheers. Cheers, Brian, and cheers to everyone. Um, this has just been such, um, oh, such a thrill to um, uh, be part of. Uh, it's uh, it's great to see such commitment, such dedication, and um, such support uh, for all colleagues uh, across the university. Uh, whatever they're doing, uh, whatever part of the university they they work in, um, the the congratulations and the genuine celebration that there has been on the chat has just been um, quite wonderful. Um, it's certainly been an occasion worthy of my um, somewhat uh, uh, bedraggled feather boa. Um, and um, I'm uh, really delighted to have been asked to, to host this evening's event. So uh, all it remains for me to say now is congratulations to all of you uh, once again. And uh, let's look forward to a uh, perhaps, hopefully, uh, less challenging year next year, um, but certainly another year where we will, I have absolutely no doubt, uh, be celebrating some uh, more fantastic achievements uh, by our colleagues. So thank you all very much and good evening. <laughs>